Without further ado, we're going to launch into the very first recipe, which is a special request from one of our uh, Elixir Kitchen family, and it's a potato leek soup. Mm -hmm. It's not just any ordinary potato leek soup, though. We want to really uh, emphasize the flavor with this one. Now, potatoes, delicious, leeks, you know, the classic. Uh, I, I don't want to mess with it too much, but we're going to add this smoky element to it. Uh, that's going to give you almost that kind of like, you know, backyard barbecue feel uh, with just a few ingredients and maybe an extra technique. Uh, so very, very simple to start. Uh, what I've done is boiled some potatoes, leeks, and rutabaga for about four or five minutes. So they're not completely cooked. Uh, I just want them slightly tender. And the reason I'm adding rutabaga, and you can do this, and it's what's nice is you can add all kinds of different root, root vegetables to it. Um, rutabaga, I, I love using. It's, it's one of the, the lonely vegetables in the grocery store. And I have, a, I have a soft spot for those vegetables that people usually walk by and they don't want to pick it up. You don't even know how to attempt it. Um, it doesn't even look quite like a vegetable because it, it looks more like a crayon or something because it has this like wax on the outside. Um, but it is, it's a delicious vegetable. I'll actually cut it in half. Uh, root vegetable, it's part of the brassica family. Uh, so it's, it's kind of part cabbage, part turnip. Um, so when you cut through it, you can kind of smell a little bit of that, that cabbage. There's even horseradish is in that family as well. So you almost get a little bit of that heat, but not, not overpowering. Um, but it's, it's a fantastic vegetable. It's used a lot um, in Europe. Uh, for mashes and soups, and it's uh, it's a nice little addition uh, to the potato as well. And that whole cabbage family on its own has been studied to sh um, in cancer prevention, and also um, they've basically extracted some of those active ingredients and studied them in the laboratory, um, and it's been shown with several types of cancer that some of those cancer-fighting compounds that were, are within the, the members of the cabbage family can slow the growth of tumors and prevent cancer cells from growing. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's really easy to prepare, uh, like most root vegetables, because of that outer uh, wax layer. And it, this is for storage, just so it keeps longer. Um, I tend to use just a sharp knife, kind of cut around it. The peeler, unless you have a really good sharp peeler, doesn't do a great job. It's kind of tough to get through there. Um, also, if you are cutting it, uh, give your knife and your cutting board a wash before you do anything uh, next because you're going to have this like candle film on the outside and it's just going to make it difficult for you to continue your prep. So, cube it, uh, just about the same size as your potatoes. And what I've done, so I have these here and I'll bring it to the cutting board. So I've cooked them, like I said, about four or five minutes just until... They're pretty soft. I can, I can squish them. The leeks, I only add the last minute. I just want to give it a quick blanch. Um, you know, it, it's such a delicate vegetable that you really don't have to cook it too much. And we're going to strain it. I'm going to reserve some of the liquid. Whoa, get it in the bowl, not over we your We get table. a lot of questions about when we boil vegetables, are we losing some of those powerful, wonderful nutrients within it? So the answer is yes, some of the water-soluble vitamins will come out into the water. Um, and that's why we try to use that water and make um, some vegetable stock with it. Or like Jeremy's doing here, he's actually going to incorporate some of it in the, the soup recipe. So onto a roasting tray. Um, now, like I said, you know, simple version. You can go ahead and can continue to cook that the whole way through, blend it. Uh, I don't season it and you have your, your leek and potato soup. But I want to get a little bit more flavor going on. So I have the oven uh, set to about 425 degrees, uh, so pretty hot. And what I want to do is, like I did here, just lay it out on a tray. And this is actually a pretty cool technique I picked up from uh, Jamie Oliver. And what he does is he kind of gives the potatoes a little bit of a crunch. You can do this with any root vegetables, just a little bit, and it, what it does is it increases the surface area. You get all these little cracks and these little bumps um, in your root vegetables, so that when you season it, it penetrates the potato a little bit more. And also when you bake it, and this is nice even just if you're doing roasted root vegetables, you get a lot of crispy bits. So it's not just the outside, all these little flakes and these little cracks 
will crisp up really, really nice. So you have an amazing like roasted root vegetable dish. Um, or if you're doing it like for us with soup, then that flavor is just gonna really get into those potatoes. And what we're using is, you know, just a little bit of salt. You can do a little bit of salt and pepper. That'll help with the crispiness as well. It draws out some of the water mm -hmm. out of the vegetables. You don't need too much. Yeah. You can even put a little bit of thyme, a little bit of rosemary if you like. Smoky flavor. Uh, we're using smoked paprika. And I've used this a few times uh, in the kitchen. It is a fantastic ingredient. Uh, it's, it's, you know, like your regular paprika, but it's smoked. Um, so it has this amazing flavor. Um, you know, no sodium. So, I mean, you're... you're, you're and if it's, you don't like great the spicy, spice this is a mild, this is a mild one. smoked. So yes. you're getting the most flavor, but not so much the heat. That's if you're not a big fan of that. Mm -hmm. Now, the great thing about soup is it's actually been studied as something to help with weight loss, to help you get to a healthy body weight and keep it. The reason being, if you go for a lower calorie soup and you eat that before your meal, then you're getting more volume because of all the water that's in it. So your stomach gets full, but you're not getting too much you know, calories from, from the soup. So that's the one thing. Secondly, if you're starting with the soup, um, it takes some time for the message from your stomach saying that you're full to reach your brain. So we usually give people the guideline. It takes about 20 minutes or so until you realize, wow, I've had enough to eat. So if you're starting with a, a higher calorie meal and just kind of going at it, you can imagine how much you can eat in 20 minutes before that signal kicks in. The soup makes you delay that process so that by the time you get to your main meal, um, it's actually been shown that you, take, you eat less, you take in less calories at your meal, and it's been shown it can help with weight. So some great reasons to incorporate soup into your diet. So that's what it looks like after about 15, 20 minutes, and you can see how much color has developed there. Uh, a lot of nice crispy corners. Um, I mean, just from, from that, you know you're going to make a great soup. You can't mess it up at this point. <laughs> Unless you drop it on the floor, don't drop it, it on the floor. It sounded like a challenge. <laughs> um, I'm jinxing everyone. No, it, this is, I mean, this is what you're looking for. I've even thrown a few garlic cloves on there um, with the skin on, leave the skin on, and it roasts beautifully with, with the uh, potatoes. You get this beautiful kind of caramelization on there. That's going to be delicious in the soup. You just got to take the skin off. And that's going to go into, you know, vegetable stock, chicken stock. Um, even if you just have a little bit of water, um, you know, just season it. But that's pretty much it. What I like to do is reserve some of the potatoes and the uh, rutabaga aside. But otherwise, blend the rest. And you get this incredible, like, amber color in the soup, and I'm going to plate some up. You know, super creamy because of those potatoes, because of those, the rutabaga. Um, and I mean, this is perfect for this time, especially when it's cold outside. And if you can see that, a really, really, really nice color. Well, we're getting there. <laughs> I, I could tilt it, but it'll just end up all over the counter. Um, Let them come to you. But very, very simple. You know what? You even take, like I said, reserve some of those potatoes aside and put a couple crispy ones just on top. Um, some chives maybe. You know, some fresh herb in there. And then one little step that I, I included in uh, your recipe it's completely optional, but it's a, a nice little trick that I learned to make crispy lentils. And this is nice as like a snack. Um, I'm going to use it as a garnish. But pretty much take cooked lentils, season them however way you like. I put a little bit of lemon zest, a little bit of black pepper. And the same time it takes to roast, you keep that tray of lentils in there. And it crisps up into this amazing, you know, little garnish or, you know, like I said, a snack. And that, you know, put a little bit on top of the soup, and I'm telling you, it's a, little, it's a little extra step, but just by having that texture component now, so you have something crunchy, you have this soft, kind of caramelized potato in there with this beautiful soup, really sim simple, and that is our lean, mean, hearty soup strainer soup.
for today.